Hey guys, Rob Mitchell here. Thanks for joining me for day trading smart price band secrets. When I did a, a video a couple days ago, I had a lot of people reached out to me uh, and asked me about the um, the black and white line on the chart, the smart price band. So I'm going to show you the smart price band today. I'm going to show you uh, how you can set that up like that. And I'm going to show you a whole bunch of ways out of like a huge number of ways that we know how to use it. Yeah. And so without further delay, day trading secrets of the smart price band differences that make a difference. Yeah. First off, past performance, not necessarily indicative of future results or is a risk of loss trading futures. Yeah. Okay, smart price band 120 concepts. What is it? SPB, smart price band. Yeah, that's what we call it. Smart price band, SPB. Um, there's a setting in the tool called multiplier. And if you set that to 1.2, then technically it's a SPB 120 or any other setting, I could set it to like 1.0 or I could set it to the traditional setting that we um, used in the trading room for, you know, like the first eight years or something uh, was 0 0.3, you yeah, know, 0.3. Um, and then uh, one day one of our members, um, well, I showed some members this concept and um, and then, uh, when another member returned from vacation, I showed it to him and we just left it on the chart because everybody liked it. Yeah, so um, when you set up a smart price band like this, it acts like an oscillator, among other things. And it gives you all kinds of pattern classifications you can make trading systems out of. Yeah, so it can overshoot or undershoot price. Yeah, so similar to an oscillator, right? So let we'll take a look at what that's, going to look like and, and what that might mean yeah so some theory smart price band 120 being cut can be associated with the smart momentum now on the charts i'm going to show you here i've taken the smart momentum smart momentum off but it can be associated with smart momentum color changes even though the the calculations are entirely different they're not even related okay because in this mode the smart price band's acting like what? It's acting like, you know, can act like an oscillator. Yeah. So theory number two, uh, most often, this goes way back. I would teach this forever. Yeah. Most often there are two or more waves. Yeah. So if you get, um, if you get, uh, if you don't get two waves, then the market is non-cycling. What do we call it when uh, when you don't get two waves? For those who know, should be coming to mind right now. Otherwise, we call it an encompassing pattern. If a market is non-cycling, it's more random than it is on non-cycling. Why? Because once it encompasses, players in different time frames don't know what to do. That's a different trading environment than a market that's cycling. And cycling can happen in very... Uh, various scales, super important. Um, and going back up to the middle there, theory number two, right? Uh, various scales. Most often there are two waves. E2s can constitute this. It can constitute a small scale. What do I mean by an E2? What is that? It's where you take out the prior brick on the charts that we're about to look at with the tail of the next bar. So the tail of the current bar overlaps, what is that? It's an encompassing pattern, we just talked about that. It overlaps, what that usually mean uh, in this particular case is the traders are trapped in there, it's a price trap, okay? On a mini scale, it's a small scale, yeah. So um, that right there, I could do a whole webinar on that. Um, or you could pause the video and think about it. And when we get over the chart, I'll point a couple out to you. Okay, so you know what they look like. All right. But keep in mind, 
Um, when a market is really moving and it's uh, not cycling, it can be micro scaling. Yeah, or it can be scaling, or you could be cutting these uh, smart price bands that I'm about to show you in the middle of the bands, which means you've got really big scale. So you can completely pattern classify uh, what the market's doing according to these lines that we're about to look at. Yeah, it's worth giving some thought to. Yeah, okay. Uh, when I first came up with this, I looked for uh, different kinds of pattern classifications. Whenever I am uh, have a tool, I want to pattern classify the tool. It makes it more usable, makes me, uh, helps me to understand it. Yeah. And so I came up with three, the three C's. Wait a minute, Rob, there's four C's on here. <laughs> yeah. All right. I came up with the three C's because the other one's kind of not one, but I call it cover. Yeah. So uh, you got constant. That's where the smart price band is going to stay. The, the one that we're talking about is black or white. It's going to stay black or it's going to stay white. Yeah, it's constant. It's uh, completely held. That means that the um, that condition is that the smart price band is going to overshoot. We talked about overshooting a minute ago. And then it's going to be held inside when it crosses back inside on what we call a single cut. You'll see that in a minute. And then it cuts. Now, I pay attention to cuts. You got single cuts and double cuts on the chart I'm about to show you because that happens first in a trend change. Wow, isn't that cool? Yeah, isn't that cool? I've pattern classified the initial stage of trend change. Yeah, and then cover will do that too or overshoot, tweener, yeah. Okay, so just throwing some of those concepts at you. We'll look at some, um, um, so I'm on a chart in a second. Yeah, what else do we have? We've got the slope, that's the color. Yeah, it's either gonna be black or white. We're also gonna have the traditional smart price band on the chart too. So I could be also above the smart price band. I could be below it. I could be trending long, I could be trending short. Okay, I could be trending long, but I'm below it. Or I could be trending short and be above it. Or I could be, be trending long and be above it, or I could tr be trending short and be below it. Those are four different uh, pattern classifications that tell you how the market's behaving right now. Um, it's likely that you would be using different approaches in these kinds of conditions. That's why I did this little mini webinar today, because I'm, I'm throwing concepts at you take 30 years for me to uh, know and understand worth thinking about right there. We could do whole webinars. We could do like months on that, but that's what the trading room's for. Yeah. So, okay. There's over 20 different patterns on this indicator. That's probably an understatement that I teach in the trading room. And we really like it. Yeah, we really do. Okay. So it can be combined with other tools, make great systems according to the four quadrant concept. Um, uh, that it talks about on indicatorsmart.com. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, got a blank page. I hope I didn't miss my. Um, hope I didn't miss it. Okay. I put some uh, on here. All right. So this one I call a touch and go. I didn't really have that on the list. As you can see, it's trending down here. This is red. This is black. These are trending down. And then it comes back and touches the smart price band 120. It's black. This is red. All right, I'm approaching in this particular kind of a pattern classification, I'm approaching it from below, tagging it, finding resistance there, and then trend continuation. This one comes up inside, but it's in between the two. We call that a tweener. You know, one of our room members uh, coined that term. Okay, uh, here's a double cut. I'm cutting both of them. The market's been going down in two waves. And then it double cuts right here. When I double cut, what am I thinking? Trend change. What does it do? It entirely encompasses this whole last structure. This is what we call this an encompassing pattern. When the market does that, I'm cutting in the middle. See, I told, told you to cut in the middle. Yeah. When you cut in the middle, that's giving you an idea of this trend is no longer intact. It might resume. But right here, it's no longer intact when you double cut these in the middle. 
Notice that bar right there. See how that tail right there encompasses the entire brick of the prior one? That's the E2. Now you'll notice something real interesting when you get these double cuts. A lot of times you'll get that E2 pattern right there. Why? Because traders get caught on the wrong side where the patterns get broken. That's worth thinking about. When you put an indicator on a chart and you see um, things like that most of the time, uh, when it double cuts, it's telling you that there are traders that are getting trapped on each side. Now that's not a full double cut, but you you know more often than not, you'll see these tails in these places. There's another classification of that. If you've got a reversal bar and it does more than 50%, in other words, if that tail comes back and touches into that prior bar, uh, then that is also, we call that a me too. That's the second kind of a, such a pattern to a reversal bar, okay? So this one's a double cut. Here's another double cut. Here's another, another double cut, yeah, okay. Here's a, um, the price is below the smart price band. Well, the smart price band's going up, hmm, right? I, to I told you in the thing, there's like four classifications there, right? Okay, the market's going down. I'm in, the, I'm in between. I could actually get six classifications out of that if I wanted to, yeah. I come up in between, trend continuation, yeah, while this stays black. Those are some of my favorites. I always watch my double cut, and I'm watching for uh, hooks when uh, both of these are the same. When I cut in the middle, there's a signal going off in my brain. Something going on. When I cut in the middle, double cut in the middle, something's going on. And then I got to look for re the resumption. See how you get this extended trend going on here? And see how you get all these tails on these bars? Tails, tails, E2, 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 E2. Yeah. This is a micro, um, a micro trend that's going on here. If I wanted to count that out, see, when I count this out, I could go A, B, C, D going down like that, and then I get the encompassing pattern. But when it micro scales, I go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Yeah, uh, 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 uh. in a micro scale, the market's really moving right there. It's really moving. A lot of times when you see that, I didn't put it in the list, but a lot of times when you see that, it's riding a line. What am I doing? I'm come, I'm getting a touch and go to a black smart price band going down. These um, these E twos are coming up and touch it, touch it, touch it, touch it, go, touch it, go. See how this uh, smart price band starts accelerating past it, and then you come up back inside. What is that? You call that held. I'm going to do that. Uh, hopefully, it uh, didn't get messed up on the next one. Yeah, I got these in the uh, in the wrong order. When it cuts back inside, that's uh, we call that held. It's kind of like this is like the, the cradle right there, and the baby's being held in the cradle. Yeah. Is this held? No, that's a double cut. That's the second double cut. Yeah. So or uh, going down and we're below it. Yeah, you know, there's a, 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 well, I said it's a six classification, it could be more. Okay, the uh, market's going down and I'm below the smart price band. Market's going down and I'm above the smart price band. Yeah. Um, the uh, color is staying black, but I'm not, I'm now inside of it on this side. I was outside of it, below it. This time I'm going, I'm riding down um, I'm writing down the line from the inside of it. And then I cut back inside, I'm held. See how that uh, reversal bar there doesn't even touch the smart price band 120? That's held, you know, uh, overshoot condition. What does that mean? It's an example of what? Oversold or overbought, or what's the, what's the common terms? Overbought or oversold, yeah. Overbought or oversold. Okay, you double cut right here. And then the smart price band stays constant through this whole thing. Now I could have said that for all these. Yeah, it's just the smart price band stayed constant. It's staying constant. Now it's gonna stay constant and then it's gonna start overshooting. And when it overshoots, um, watch out. You know, we'll get down here, they're overshooting. Hmm, what do you think is gonna happen? This is another reason, this is why the, uh, members in a trading room love this thing because when that turns white, 
you probably don't want to be shorting over anything. Probably don't. Well, they're constant. This is a single cut. You get a double cut over here. This is held. This is held. Oops. How do I go back? No. No. Um, okay. The slope is uh, it's white, and you're going up. How about if you had it? Uh, you're white, and you're going down. Yeah. There's a single cut. Well, Marco's going down, and it's white going against. This is where the held happened um, later. Yeah, got rolled over late. It was a two of cuts in the middle. Yeah, this is uh, encompassing pattern. It went both sides of this stuff over here. Yeah, so, um, so those are a bunch of different uh, patterns that we use that I covered before. You could spend a lot of time studying this. If you're gonna set up your smart price band like this, um, just take your traditional settings and just change that multiplier to 1.2 um, or whatever other uh, number that you might like and just uh, explore that a bit if you've got the tool, the smart price band. Yeah, okay. Um, if you like what I'm showing you here, uh, get the tool yeah? or get a package or a package lease that includes it. Or you can uh, join, you know, if you like what, you know, we've learned a couple things over the years uh, doing this in the trading rooms. And, um, and I teach this daily, a lot of different uh, patterns on this one. Yeah. And you can, like I said earlier, you can combine these things together into all different kinds of systems. And um, by the way, I was, I was going to do a little uh, video on it uh, just as a side note, and I'll probably still do the video on it, but you have to trade what you see. Somebody can't make you see something. That was one of the first thing I learned when I started teaching in a trading room. People um, can't necessarily see a certain pattern. So I just threw like, you know, years of pattern learning at you, right? The ones that you see are the important ones. Yeah. So if you see, you know, if you see patterns here and you've got this tool or you're thinking about having the tool and you see the pattern, focus on the ones that you see first, learn the other ones later. Yeah. I cannot stress how important that is um, in your journey and finding your personal holy grail, you'll come across all different kinds of ways of understanding the way your um, tools uh, work with the, um, with the price action and everything else. And it's super important to do the ones that you see, because if somebody's trying to ram something down your throat that you can't see, um, that's not going to work. It's just not, and I've seen people that got an IQ of 150. It takes them a year and a half before they can see a pattern. It's not it has nothing to do with intelligence. Yeah. So let your mind give it the freedom and flexibility to show you what it knows, and then uh, start your journey there. Not don't try and do something that you don't. So that's why I do these um, presentations that are a, a smorgasbord, <laughs> if I know how to pronounce that, of different ideas, because I want you to take from it what you can right now. And then, you know, you go watch this video again in a few months and go, whoa, wow, that's a, you know, you'd be amazed. There's like a whole another world there. You know, if you work, if you work on it, you know, earnestly. Okay, uh, thanks for joining me. Join us at Stock Index Trading Room, Oil Trading Room, or learn more at indicatorsmart.com. And thanks for joining me. We'll see you again on the next one.